All right, here we go. Uh, our mission is to weaken the Vesuvius's offensive capabilities. Really, if you just take out enough of its escorts, uh, that's all you got to do. Tell everyone to break and attack here. Idiot ran right into me. Ah, oh, my afterburners are stuck. I didn't realize that. There might be a button that locks your afterburners. I've never really used it because most of the time fuel is a concern, so you're never going to do anything like that. <clears throat> Alright, so apparently we gotta be taking out the turrets on the Vesuvius, but <laughs> if you look at this thing, it's just, it's freaking out. It won't hold still, so it's hard to get a, a beat on these turrets, because... Uh, and I'm running into it just from how often it moves around. Uh, like take, let's just take another look at this. Oh, it's already jumped out of the system. Are we okay then? Or? Well, I guess so. Since it's a really short mission, there's not a lot of tension going on there. Because for one thing, we just are in this overpowered ship, and there's really no grind to these last missions. It's kind of just focused more on the story, but still, I, I wish there was a little more tension in these final battles. This is a really cool scene. And those are awesome carriers. And still even smaller than the Midway, which we'll see in Wing Commander Prophecy. <laughs> that uh, flashback's still just kind of sitting there like that. I don't know, it's just like, if you see ordnance lying around the hangar bay, you would s you'd think you'd see it all strapped up, and it seems like this is a very sophisticated weapon that they would need some kind of special handling, but they just have it sitting there on a shelf. I don't know why that strikes me as funny. Which we've done before. Oh, come on. It's totally now or never. I like that Vesuvius, or the, <laughs> sorry, the Vindicator in the background getting towed. That was kind of a nice touch. Alright. No, oh, Admiral Tolan's kind of rubbing it in our faces. See there in his gay jumpsuit. <laughs> I think it's time. It's really interesting what Tolwyn says here to me. With pleasure. The heart of the tiger. He's always been a thorn in my side. See, in as many as two lines, he's said things that are equally as confusing as they are intriguing. So, 
He says Blair is a thorn in his side and he always has been, which just makes you wonder yet again that Starfield just kind of stopped right there and then it resumes. But anyway, Tolan is just saying that Blair has always been a thorn in his side, so why on earth did he pull him from retirement? But then he also goes on to say that he could have truly been a great warrior, which kind of makes me wonder if he wasn't going to eventually try to recruit Blair into the Black Lance, or maybe, I don't know, It's I've never understood his motivation behind it. Because anyone could have pulled him from active duty. It, it could have just even been Ison appealing to him that he needed his help. Like, why did they have it so Tolan recruited him? <laughs> Ison isn't that impressed by the flashback. If I was Ison, I'd be like, really? Flashback? What is it? Tell me all about it. <laughs> mm, he's just like, alright, well, good luck with it. <laughs> so if we look at our ship configuration here, there's the flashback all locked in. And just like we did in Wing Commander 3, we're going to fly through the Vesuvius' hangar bay and release it. And unfortunately, it's very, very easy to do. Which just brings me back to the whole problem with these final missions. I'm not even worried about my wingmen right now. But, uh, well, what can I say? I don't know what to say about it. Well, seriously, just, I mean, ask yourself, why did Toan bring Blair out of retirement? I'll never fully understand it. He should have known that Blair, if he found out about the Black Lance, would just be morally opposed to it. And yet, I don't, I don't know. Really gonna raise my kill score here. Go get him, brother! Break formation and open fire. These guys are history. So here's how shamelessly, shamefully easy this mission is. I can just cloak lock onto it. I'm not cheating here, this is just perfectly... I'm not even exploiting a bug or like exploiting or just taking advantage. This is just something I can totally do. I'm cloaked and I'm going into the uh, Vesuvius's hangar bay. I'm even gonna kill my speed. Uncloak! Fire the flash pack, and now book it. And the thing blows up. And that's it. Crazy, right? I would like to at least kill these Hellcats to get some final satisfaction. I think I'm allowed to do that. Oh, so... Interesting. I don't know if I mentioned before, but one final theory I have as to why Tolwyn pulled Blair out of retirement was because I believe possibly that, uh, well, let's watch this briefing. Maniacs unusually pensive. Interesting. Okay, so as I was saying, I think it's possible that the reason Tolwyn brought Blair back is because he knew maybe in some way that Blair would oppose Tolwyn, 
and he wanted to use Blair as a test for the Black Lance and maybe even for Seether himself to just test his superiority so like he knew his Black Lance forces were powerful but he kinda was telling himself if I want to really prove to myself how powerful my forces are I need to bring Blair back into the fold and mix him up into the equation and eventually have my own forces go up against him because I have a feeling he's gonna be that thorn in my side and so it's a risk but it's just it could just be on account of uh, his ego you know alright I like this music they play on the final mission and of course we're about to go one on one with Seether let's get our Imrex ready there's his signature move blowing up the mine dragon against dragon this battle's kind of annoying because Seether cloaks a lot like all the dragon pilots do and he never holds still so what I find usually the best thing to do is is uh, let him get a shot at us or not okay never mind <laughs> in the past when I've done this he could be very stubborn and just uh, wow Seether you suck I'm embarrassed for you. Alright, that's gone a lot more difficult for me in the past. Not in the sense that he may kill me, but he's often uh, hard to kill and that he just runs away from you. I don't want to kill these guys here, personally, just because I think they're genuine confed. So I'm just going to use my unlimited afterburners to... Uh, I think I will uncloak, though. Let's get a good look at our ship. So cool. Who doesn't love this ship? Look how many uh, thingamajigs it's got on the back of it. It's a really bulky looking ship though. But I love its design though. Those guys are keeping up with me, aren't they? Alright, I guess I'll stay cloaked. Maybe I could have killed the arrow aces. Ah, it's too late. We made it to the assembly anyway. I like all those flags up there. My guess is each one represents a planet. Space Marshal. If I had to guess, Space Marshal would just be akin to like a carte blanche law enforcement officer in space. So he can do whatever he deems necessary to protect the galaxy. Esteemed Senators, um, thank you for bestowing this honor on me. And for allowing me to speak to you before you cast your momentous votes. Well, we can no longer ignore the obvious. The border wars wage war against us. I like those uh, council outfits they we got on. They're pretty cool. Turn a blind eye. Let me lay out for you some of the more egregious transgressions that have been committed against innocent Confederation civilians. This is a cool shot too. We're flying into futuristic Washington yes. D.C. All these skyscrapers right around the Capitol building. It should not be undertaken unless all options have been exhausted. I'm afraid to I guess that area isn't a restricted airspace either because Blair just flies right in. In a unidentified ship. You think there'd be like ships totally swarming him? Yeah, you could argue he cloaked his way in. However, those security guards there are doing a poor job as well. <laughs> He's just standing there. And they don't even notice him. He just walks right in. I mean, look at his 
vantage point. He could just open fire on all these people. Just go on a killing spree. Seize Let's seize the, the moment, moment, shall we? There is a cancer that needs to be cut out. Seize that man! <laughs> seize that man! But it's not on the frontiers of the galaxy, but right here before you! Well, This scene is very Shakespearean, is it? it? This I won't is pretend I know Shakespeare, but I know this is very dramatic. But it's very well done. I love this scene. I guess even though I was disappointed in the final battle, like, you insult me, I guess it's not the point. The point here is, like, really it's a battle of wits now, and I get it. Do complete got that. You can actually do these first parts wrong, and uh, Tolan will actually win the argument, and, and everyone votes for him, and you go to prison. Saying this assembly has been duped. A charade. An elaborate charade perpetrated by you, sir. Who requires their ignorance in order to carry out a personal agenda. They keep looking at each other, like huh? the border rules have fallen victim to a plot, which if allowed to proceed will make all of humanity a victim. Well, I suppose there is a strange logic in that. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> They're all reassured by that comment of this. <laughs> oh, why is that so funny? Alright, I'm gonna dance around him. Do you believe in the concepts of law and order? Of course, I've devoted my life to them. Haven't we all? And you believe these concepts to be the foundation of a strong society? Indeed. Without law and order, we are lost. Law and order. Control. Maintaining the status quo, that's what this is all about. Harmony among men is a secondary issue. Harmony is maintained through control. He'll trip himself up. He's, He's mad, mad with power. power. <laughs> control at what cost, Adam? I am a warrior, as you once were. I do whatever is necessary for victory without question. Without question. Have any of you questioned the Admiral about his Black Lance forces? Marshal! <laughs> he remembers to refer to him as Marshal. If I may remind the Assembly, as commander of the SRA, I'm empowered to marshal whatever forces are necessary to protect our galactic interests. And these forces are stationed at a starbase in the Axia system, isn't that right? Well, it is my duty to station forces where they may be needed. I even like the lighting in this scene. And the Black Lands have some extraordinary equipment at their disposal. Effective soldiers require effective tools. Like bioweapons. <laughs> He goes, like, bioweapons. <laughs> Obviously, we gotta choose this one because, yeah, like, ships that are being tested would be unmarked, but bioweapons obviously sounds pretty awful right off the bat. Would you qualify the Gen Select bioweapon as an effective tool, Admiral? <laughs> this is an outrage. This assembly has never approved the development of use of a biotech weapon. As with any experimental device, I would of course have brought it to your attention as soon as it neared readiness. I think the people of Telamon know just how ready it is. The few that are left can speak of a weapon that selectively kills anyone whose physical or, or mental attributes don't measure up to someone's predetermined standards. 
Telemann's tragedy is still under investigation. But I have no doubt it'll prove to be the doing of the Board of the World's thugs. Guys are just full of criminals, aren't they? It appears so. <laughs> I met Malcolm McDowell once when he was uh, on location filming that mini. Well, was it a mini series? No, it was like a sci-fi movie. It was Firestarter 2. And he, uh, let's tell them more. He was a really nice guy. Like, I knew he was on set, and I really wanted to meet him, so, like, I brought my copy of Wing Commander 4, and he signed it for me. It was cool. Genetic Enhancement. Funny thing about being against Genetic Enhancement is if you're a spacefaring race and you got to spend a lot of time in space, it kind of makes sense to start doing genetic engineering just to make humans more accustomed to being in space. So he's tipped his hand about Seether, the leader of the Black Lance. He's already getting kind of lost in his deranged thoughts. Like you can see Admiral Tolwyn starting to lose it. <laughs> Great performance from Mark Camel. Except right here. <laughs> I can't tell if that's good acting or overacting. I like it though, but. And then McDowell is just awesome here. And he makes a perfectly good point, too. We could very well be attacked by someone much worse. I mean, you're going out into space, what do you expect will happen? You already know there's life out there. Like, I think ideologically, Tolan is totally in the right, even if his methodology is flawed. But you gotta meet him halfway there, don't you? Mm. Then you feel kind of bad for him. He's kind of broken now. What he was saying was so deplorable that even Paladin just had to stop him in the middle. And this look on Tolan's face, I just love it. He's a great actor. So everyone's voting no. <laughs> Couple people voted yes. They're probably just trolling though. They're like, I'm going to vote yes just to be ironic. It's funny anyone would vote at all because if you pretty much know everyone's going to vote yes, aren't you just kind of committing political suicide to vote yes? I don't know. So they take Tolan away. I like this one of the Senate members, like, Good job, buddy. Yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> this guy's like, Hey, way to go. Let me give you a hug. You saved a lot of lives today. Hey, I'll buy you coffee later. Thanks. <laughs> now here we are at Tolan's trial. Very swelling orchestral theme here. Everyone points at him too, which I think they should have redone. It kinda looks weird that everyone points at him. You saw the results? Keep an eye out for Chris Roberts as well. There he is. <laughs> he couldn't go on either. That was his last Wing Commander game. Yeah, why is Sosa there? We saved her boyfriend, she doesn't get to testify. That's one of my favorite shots right there of the Kilrathi ship getting the flash pack used on it.
And then he hangs himself. Which is, I guess, how many military dictators have ended their lives after things didn't work out for him. I mean, being that he is akin to a space Nazi, but at least he didn't take, like, cyanide or something. That would just would have been too obvious. And so here's the good ending if you went down the more positive path and tried to save more lives. You get to be a flight instructor. If you follow the other path, the ending is much different. Like, you actually end up being promoted to Admiral, and the last scene has Hawk in it. Whereas if you're this flight instructor, the last scene has Panther in it, which actually kind of makes sense because, you know, you kind of went with Panther's recommendations, so she appears in this last scene. Where if you did it the other way, with Hawk's recommendations, he would have appeared in the last scene with you. I actually like the other ending, but uh, it didn't seem too plausible that Blair would take up the position of Admiral and go on just flying the desk. He just likes to fly. I'm glad they threw Maniac in there in the last scene, though. Hey, pal, the senator, what's up? Uh, that's not necessarily true. You can be something in between. See, there's Panther. <laughs> that's what Blair earned, is the right to tell people to wait. Like, after saving the galaxy once again, his reward is he can take a ship out and fly it whenever he wants to. Even if that means making some newbies wait on their training. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And this, this is a really cool shot. I love the Banshee. I was glad they showed that ship pulling out there. He rolls it. It's the afterburners. And kind of goes off into the sunset. Of course, there's many suns there. Stars, I should say. Pretty awesome game. They did it all with a budget of about $10 million, which I think is really amazing what they pulled off with it. So, you know, like I said, with most FMV games, they're, most of them are pretty terrible, but even as a non-FMV video game perspective, if you just look at this as just a cinematic production in itself, I think it's really well done. Like, it's better than a lot of science fiction movies I've seen in terms of its writing, and, you know, there's a few plot holes, a few glaring plot holes in it, but for the most part, I think it's a very warranted sequel, you know, it makes sense to ask yourself what would happen to humanity after they finish fighting the Karathi War and there is peace. Because obviously there's still going to be tension in the universe, like politically and economically and all that. And then the story itself. I mean, like I've said several times by now, that was the only thing I never quite understood about Blair bringing, getting back from retirement on the Admiral's orders. And if any of you have thoughts on that, I, I'd love to hear it. But I've always just wondered about it. And I really think that maybe it was, I don't know, he could have been sentimental about Blair, but I think he wanted to bring him in the fold just on the off chance that he could provide a challenge to his Black Lance forces, which was obvious, if that's true, it's obviously a big risk that did not pay off in it. Because, I mean, Blair could have just stayed on that planet and it's possible that Tolan would have gone through with this plan without a hitch, so you gotta ask yourself why he d on earth he did that. So, pretty interesting stuff. I love the music to this game, I love the cinematics, I love the art direction, I love the production values. I even love these credits. Getting a bit of s screen tearing there, I've noticed like the... I wonder if I should have turned the cycles up on the game. Oh, excellent game. Then you got Wing Commander Prophecy after this, which I, I don't think Chris Roberts was too involved in. I, I could be mistaken. It's got a lot of the same actors from Wing Commander 3 and 4. However, it feels very, very different. Not even just the cinematic tone of the game, but just the, uh, the way the entire game plays. That game's hard for me to get working because it came out in Windows... Uh, 95 or 98 I think and games of that era are ironically actually more difficult to get working than just old games that I can load on DOSBox so uh, 
I'd like to do it eventually, but I've got some issues with it. Just like, what was that other game? Fallout is a game that kind of works good in Windows 95 and 98 or XP as well. And for that reason, I've been a hard, I've had a hard time getting it to, uh, I can actually get the game to work, but I have my recording solution for it. it's not very good right now. i got to come up with something different. <sighs> so what game will I play next? I think it's possible that I might play Under a Killing Moon, which is the Tex Murphy game. It's an adventure game where you solve mysteries because you're a private investigator. In some ways I find the timing and production values and everything about else about that game comparable to Wing Commander 3 and 4 actually. Uh, it's also an FMV game. I might play something even older than that. I'm not sure if I'll come back to Wing Commander just yet. With the exception of maybe playing the first Wing Commander, that could be fun. I have beaten it. I haven't beaten the secret missions though. And I've never beaten Wing Commander 2. Got really close, but I mean, I know how it all ends. Uh, so here we have the cast. Let's take a look at this. Confed Richard. <laughs> Did they mean to call him Richards? Is that a Star Trek reference? Telemon female column officer. I like looking up a lot of these people on IMDB and see if they were on anything else. Generic cap. Slapping woman. Who's the slap? Oh, that was a woman in the bar. So, and as I've also mentioned, Chris Roberts has a new project that he's working on, and uh, it looks like it's going to be like a spiritual successor to the Wing Commander games. And uh, those credits ended sooner than I thought. So I'll just end here. I'll see you guys when I see you. Uh, I gotta decide on my next game, and we'll uh, we'll find out what it is later. Thanks for watching.